and if anyone wants um, a, the recording of this meeting for to look, review in the future, just um, email me. I'll put my email address in the chat window when I get done hand, and hand off. So um, thanks everybody for joining. Um, good morning. Welcome to our Q&A session for the People Tools 859 upgrade. These updates are going to be implemented in production tomorrow. We have two overview documents to walk through today to provide information on the changes you'll see once this moves into production. I'm going to put the links uh, to the overview documents in the chat in case anybody wants to review them. Uh, after we walk through the documents, we're going to be available for questions. So stick around if you have questions. You can also ask questions in the chat and we'll try to get to them um, either during or after the presentations. So um, let's see, Padma is going to review the accessibility updates and then Brian will review the updates to the people tools updates. Um, okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to hand it over to Padma, um, who's going to walk through accessibility updates. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yep, you sound great. Okay, thank you. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. All right, good. So, good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. My name is Padma. Welcome to the People to Set Finite Accessibility Updates overview session. Little intro before we start of uh, the term accessibility, in case if anyone is not aware of that term. Accessibility is making sure that the application is usable, accessible by everyone. So PeopleSoft provides two modes of logging in, standard mode for users who interact with application using vision, and screen reader mode for users who interact with application using sound. So users who have loss of vision or low vision, they use screen reader mode, and access the application using assistive technologies, sometimes also known as screen readers. Can, can everybody please mute yourselves? Thank you. Uh, like JAWS and NVDA. Also developers, analysts who support accessibility temporarily turn on screen reader mode for testing, fixing issues, etc. So let's see what changes Oracle has delivered in people tools 859 for improving accessibility all right so in 859 people soft application added ability to set the screen reader mode dynamically so prior to 859 upgrade like what we have right now screen reader mode could be turned on by selecting my preferences sub menu under actions menu on the banner let me actually show you where it is so on the banner there is actions menu and there is my preferences here so user could user can set the accessibility layout option under general settings um, to screen reader mode on and then after they log off and log back in for all the subsequent sessions, screen reader mode remains on, unless, of course, user physically turns it off from general options. So once turned on, it uh, remains on. That is how the behavior was. After the people tools 859 upgrade, a new option uh, is added, screen reader in action menu is added under general settings you can see here uh, if this option is selected uh, this a new link is becomes enabled enable screen reader mode link appears on the action menu so if you select this link then the system will display a prompt with message screen reader mode will be enabled would you like to persist this setting for subsequent sessions so and this this particular prompt has three buttons yes no cancel so if user selects no on this then screen reader mode will be enabled only for the current session 
and system will display a confirmation message about saying that it is enabled only for this session. If, if the user selects yes, then screen reader mode will be enabled for not only the current session, but for all the subsequent sessions. And a confirmation message is displayed so it is clear to uh, users what is happening. So what is, that, what is the change? The change is screen reader mode can now be turned on temporarily only for the current session or all sessions going forward. We have that choice now. This is uh, especially helpful for analysts, developers who support accessibility and turn on uh, screen reader mode uh, as needed. And I have also added here, you see some notes about when this enable screen reader mode link is available and when it is not available. So there are certain conditions when it is available and not available. Like, you know, when screen reader mode is already in effect, it will not display, etc. All right. So let's see the next one. Next enhancement is to keyboard shortcuts. As you know that screen reader users use keyboards, keyboard to access application, not mouse. So Oracle has added additional keyboard shortcuts and also um, if you in a browser, you press certain uh, key shortcut, it displays information page for all keyboard shortcuts. That shortcut for uh, keyboard information uh, page is changed. So what is changed? So keyboard, keyboard shortcuts, Alt-1, Alt-5, Alt-7, Alt-8, Alt-Hash, these are implemented for fluid applications. Now, if you want to know that uh, what these new shortcuts do, you can find the full list of shortcuts. Uh, I have given the link there. Um, so you will be able to find that information there. Then uh, next one is the keyboard information page which displays um, in 857. If you press shift control K, then this keyboard information page displays. Uh, but that was conflicting with certain, the, the shift control K was conflicting with JAWS and certain browsers. So now in 859, they have changed that uh, shortcut for information page to Alt K in Windows. And also a shortcut, control K is now available for Mac, Macintosh operating system. And just a note about uh, the key sequences displayed on the keyboard information page are appropriate for the browsers that you are currently signed on with. So if you see something different, don't be startled because that is how it displays. All right. Next one is non-text color contrast. Now there are users who have low, low vision or have difficulty in differentiating between colors. So they, they use standard mode and access applications visually, but they, the application has to be accessible to them. So keeping in mind these users, uh, web content accessibility guideline for non-text color contrast uh, requires an application to have minimum color contrast ratio of 3 to 1. And people tools 859, uh, sorry, 857, which we currently have, was failing this compliance. So in uh, people tools 859, Oracle has increased color contrast for non-text colors. Now, what do you mean by non-text colors? Like hovering over tiles on the home page or hovering over menu items on the nav bar. So the color contrast for that. So prior to 859 upgrade, the hover color while moving mouse over a tile on the home page was light yellow on a light blue background. And the contrast 
ratio that was it was 1.18 to 1 which was less than 3 to 1 also the hover color if the mouse is moved um, over the navigation bar uh, items it was a light yellow on a white background and that had a contrast ratio of 1.01 to 1 less than 3 to 1 so non text contrast compliance test failed in 857 can you please can everybody please mute yourself please thank you all right so now after people to 859 upgrade the hover color while moving mouse over a tile it does not change it it remains the same but what they have done is they have added a dark blue border uh, around the tile on the background of light blue and it has a contrast ratio 4.4 to 1 which which confirms because it's uh, greater than 3 to 1 similarly um, if you move mouse over the nav bar on a particular nav bar item item then uh, it is light blue on a white background but a dark blue border is added if you see on the left hand side there if you see on the screen left hand side they have added um, dark blue border with contrast ratio of 4.97 to 1 so now the this power color contrast ratios are greater than 3 to 1 and 859 is non text contrast compliant for these items one more item they changed the color contrast for and that is file attachment drag and drop area so this file attachment drag drag and drop area border it it was green color border like when we move the file and bring it over that area then that uh, drop area of the file it, ha it is to have green color border with light green background, which absolutely failed the color contrast test 1.91 to 1. So in 859, while dragging the file in that file attachment box drop area, it gets black color border on a white background. And of course, it is the best. 21 to 1 so it is greater than 3 to 1 so now this area is non-text contrast compliant in 859 next is search page changes for identifying the context of search results now these these accessibility changes are done for component search pages in classic so prior to 859 upgrade on component search page, like you know how this component search page looks, after entering the criteria and the search button is pressed, the context of the search was not announced by screen readers. For example, what you are seeing is the search button is pressed on department's search page. So the context of the search is departments. It was not announced before by uh, screen readers like NVDA while reading the search results. It was just announcing search results. Uh, only the first 300 display, etc., etc. So um, also there was one more problem with this component search. That was that if if search was performed for the criteria that return no results then you can see on the screen it displays no matching values were found but this no matching values were found was not an announced by assistive technology nvda was um, just announcing search button search alt one main content document that text no matching values were found was not announced at all so both these issues with component search page are fixed in tools 859. So after 859, when the search button is pressed, the context of the search departments is announced now by NVDA. Also for the second scenario, 
when the search is performed, you can see that I have given here the NVDA uh, speech viewer output. Uh, it actually lists that no matching values were found. It is announced by assistive technology. That is, those are the search page changes. Now another, another small fix is done for, it's not a small thing really. I mean, technically it is small, but uh, experientially it makes a big difference. Um, so a fix is done for but button header purpose compliance. So you know that there, is, there are grids. So we have a lot of grids in the application. So if you see the grid button, uh, grid header, it has, um, you know, like for in this screenshot, holiday, description, etc., etc. And if you click on that, it actually sorts that uh, using that. So it is really a button which is used for sorting. But what was happening is uh, this grid, grid header button was identified as a link instead of a button and the purpose of it was not very clear. So when grid button header was pushed, it was saying holiday link, column two, description link, like that. So after people tools 859 upgrade, now it will, uh, uh, in, it will announce column one holiday sort button, column two description sort button. So the users will know that this is going to function as a sort button and its name is holiday or its name is description. That is the change. And the next change is for unexpected behavior of escape button. We normally use this escape button to, to close a pop-up menu. So this escape button, uh, which, which if somebody presses on action menu on the grid, let me show you the screenshot. So on the grid, there is this action uh, menu, which, which is for pop-up menu. Um, it was not behaving properly, that escape button. And this was especially problematic for screen reader users. So, excuse me. So prior to 859 upgrade, if user selected escape button on the keyboard when this pop-up menu is displayed it will it it was just it was closing the grid action menu which is which was good but while doing so it was refreshing the whole page and the focus was going to the top of the page you know so that was a big problem suddenly you know the users think oh, what happened there why am i where am i so now in 859, this issue is fixed. And uh, now pressing escape button on grid action menu closes that action pop-up menu and focus remains on the same action menu grid icon. So that was a fix done. Next one is for the query, query manager viewer, those of you who use query manager viewer and in screen reader mode, um, that search criteria, which you can see that query name on a, for a basic search, there's a criteria begins with. So query name begins with certain whatever query uh, you can put there begins with the search. So um, what was happening is that that begins with, which appears read only here, was not announced at all. So the users didn't know query name and what. <laughs> because it was not announced. So this issue is fixed in uh, tools 859. And we had actually created SR for this. So criteria begins with is read along with the search field value after the people tools 859 upgrade. And lastly, the issue of home page header not readable is fixed. So this is some tool I have used to show the headers. Headers are very important for screen reader users and they use it heavily to, and to uh, hear the structure of the page. So prior to 859 upgrade, if the user was on home page, say uh, employee self-service, instead of employee self-service being header one, the header one was home page tiles. 
which did not make any sense and screen reader users could not easily identify the home page selected by them so after people to 859 upgrade the home page header like employee self service will be listed as header one so screen reader users will be able to identify the selected home page and uh, yes that's all i have um, these are the improvements uh, to accessibility in 859 thanks for allowing me to present um, this to you now i will hand over to uh, brian he will show you the um, changes in the standard mode all the questions you might have will be taken up at the end of the session so thank you brian yeah thanks padma um so yeah like i'll be going over just kind of some of the general look and feel changes you can expect to see with the 859 upgrade once we go live so basically the login and the portal those will remain the same. So, uh, you know, that will be um, kind of the same process. We currently use an 857. Um, once you get to um, any of the applications, so whether it's CS, Finance, or HCM, that's when you'll uh, start to notice the changes. And basically, the changes will be going over today apply to all three pillars. So, uh, even if an example just from like CS, like you see in the screenshot here, um, basically the same changes and uh, concepts apply to, to the other pillars as well. So um, with that, we'll start with the home page since that's kind of basically the first place you'll land and for some of the greatest changes have taken place. So first off, they've added a big uh, search bar here up on the top center of the page. Um, that used to just be this kind of magnifying glass icon that was tucked away with the other icons in the taskbar. But uh, like I said, that's now kind of front and center. And since that's there, that has displaced, you see the kind of home page selection drop down menu. So that's kind of shifted down to the left a little bit. So we see you'd still click on that just like we do in 857 and then um, select any of the home pages. So whether it's the delivered uh, home page or any custom home pages you've created, um, you can select those. And one of the new features is uh, they see they added this kind of toggle button here. So uh, you see this user has 12 home pages. And so you can um, basically use the back arrow to go to the prior one or the forward arrow to go to the, the next page. So basically, you're able to toggle um, through the home pages uh, that way. Um, instead of just selecting them through the drop down there. And then they have also added a, a new icon for notifications. So uh, it used to be a little flag icon that's now replaced with this bell icon that you see here. Um, so you can just select that and then the kind of notifications panel will show up and you can um, kind of access managing notifications um, that way as well. And they do have uh, a new feature as far as uh, basically you can kind of embed the notification panel on your home page. So basically it would show up here on the, the right side of the page. Uh, so it would just save you a click from instead of having to click it to get it to show up. Basically you can have it show up um, all the time. So I'll get to that a little bit more later. And then another new feature they added is what they're calling the quick access bar. So that's what you see uh, here on the left. So basically it's just a slightly faster way to get to your recently visited pages, which is this uh, clock icon or your favorites, which is uh, this heart icon. Um, so you can still get to those options just like we did by seven of selecting the kind of compass icon here to get the nav bar up um, and select those. But basically now you can select those. Uh, the quick access bar as well and uh, you see the display on the left side for uh, you know larger screens like your desktop um if you're using a smaller screen like a mobile device uh, basically that will show up kind of horizontally on the, the bottom of the screen 
And then, um, so you mentioned with uh, the notifications panel, so that will be uh, like hidden by default for all users. Um, so each user can go in and um, kind of have a display, you know, permanently on their homepage uh, for each pillar if they would like. Uh, so basically, the way that you would uh, do that is you select the actions button, which is that three vertical dots um, icon in the top part of the screen, and then you'll have a personalized home page option you can select from the drop down. And once you do that, basically that will take you to this personalized home page. And then they've added um, on the top of that page uh, what you see here in the screenshot with this button that says show notifications panel. And so if you have it selected like yes, like we have shown here, um, basically that means you know, the notification panel will be shown on the right side of your home page. And then you can also select, uh, you know, no to get that uh, to be hidden. And so that's something like I said, basically each user can update for their own preferences. And then once you have it set, you know, it'll be saved for, for future logins. Um, but like I said, if you turn out you don't like it, you know, you can always just uh, flip it back to the other option and click save. So, um, yeah, it's basically new features available for folks. Um, with the nav bar, uh, they made a few changes to some of the images and the labels. So, uh, you see the recently visited, now is a clock icon, it used to be called recent places. So, same thing, just a slightly different name and slightly different logo. Uh, same thing with uh, the favorites, it used to be called my favorites, now it's just simply called favorites. And then it used to have a little yellow star. And that's now this uh, kind of heart icon. And all of your uh, favorites that you have saved, um, basically those will be retained. So um, when you log in um, after the parade, basically all your favorites will still be uh, present. It's just uh, it's a slightly new little icon and thing to get there. And then um, with the kind of navigator or menu search, um, they've Place that with this new icon and then um, also basically call it menu uh, instead of navigator. Um, that's basically kind of how you get to the menu hierarchy as far as uh, you'll be able to drill down um, to various uh, folders and pages. And when you are using the, the menu um, icon there to, <coughs> to navigate, Basically, they've uh, added some new images on the left side to kind of help denote whether uh, it is a folder or a page. So, uh, if it is a folder, what that means basically has, um, you know, options below it. Um, so, you can see with this little arrow here on the right side, they also have this kind of brown folder icon, um, just helping to let you know that if you click on that, um, you know, you have more options below that. Uh, well, if you select one of these uh, pages, which are kind of noted with this green icon here, um, if you select that, that is an actual page. Um, so that kind of, you know, this is in destination, get to that page, so that means you don't have to have um, you know, additional options to, to select through as you're, um, yeah, trying to get to where you want to go. Uh, one nice thing they did bring back uh, was breadcrumbs. So, Breadcrumbs, uh, if you're not familiar with that term, is basically um, just showing um, kind of the, the navigation pathway that uh, you've taken. Um, so it makes it a little easier to, to get around. Um, and so we have a kind of side by side comparison. So on the left, we have uh, basically what we currently have at 857. And then on the right is basically what we're going to with 859. And so we see currently, uh, you know, no matter how many levels down you are, kind of in the menu structure, um, basically you'd only see what uh, you know the current folder level is, and then your options below that. Um, that's what we currently have. What we're going to is uh, this here on the right. So it has these are the breadcrumbs um, on the top here. And so, uh, you know, now we see the current folder that we're in here, but we also see 
um, everything else uh, that's higher up in the video hierarchy as well. So um, super nice as far as uh, you know, being able to reference stuff. Um, makes it a little easier. So if you're, you know, wanted to jot down like the navigation for future reference, uh, like for example, uh, it's your records roll bit, you know, roll students, and then like what your roll student when you get to this particular page. Um, so like, so that's nice. Like it's kind of all one place to be able to see everything. And then the other nice feature with the breadcrumbs is uh, these uh, are actual links here. Um, and so if you want to jump to a specific level in the menu hierarchy, um, basically you would just select that. So for example, I could just select records that are roll bit, you know, it would take me to that level or I could select, you know, menu, take me all the way to the top. Um, it's like really super helpful too, especially, you know, some of these pages are like, you know, several folders deep. Um, and so being able to kind of click around through those a little bit faster uh, is definitely a nice feature. So I'm glad they, Brought that back and it's a little easier as far as uh, getting around through the menu tree. And another change they've made to uh, you see the menu uh, kind of functionality um, is basically they've added a new uh, sort order. Um, so you can basically sort alphabetically. Uh, if you would like, and so we see the way you set that, uh, we see open the nav bar and then you select this little gear icon for your nav bar settings. And then, um, basically you're presented with this page, uh, got the personalized nav bar and your menu order is listed here. I uh, mean, alphabetical or standard. So standard is just the name that we, uh, have currently, such that we use at 857, um, so that's going to be the default for each user um, across all pillars. Um, but after we go live, um, once you log in, um, you can definitely uh, adjust your settings if you want to just try it out and see if you like it better. Um, you see, just uh, it's like the alphabetical option, um, and then select save, and then so then that preference would be saved for that pillar for all uh, future logins. And so you can um, you know try that out, see if you like it better, and not you just flip back to standard and save. Um, so if you're, uh, familiar with PeopleSoft, um, uh, you know, been using it for a while, um, you know, you may just be more comfortable with standard. Um, I think probably the biggest advantage for the alphabetical is for new employees. Um, so instead of trying to have to learn, you know, it's like, oh, it's option number 10, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's easier to find as this has the section headings. Um, I would say just my personal opinion. The, the drawbacks with alphabeticals is they do have these like letter headings. Um, it does take a bit more space on the page. And then they also um, have folders and um, pages all kind of listed together alphabetically versus the standard mode. You see all of your uh, folder options, you know, show up top and then it's uh, pages below that. So um, can be a little bit more cluttered, but um, it is I would say at least yeah nice nice thing to have available for folks so um, basically recommend just you know trying that out uh, you know Monday or whatever first time you log in um, you know just kind of see what uh, what works best for you and then um, as far as uh, kind of changes within the menu structure um, Oracle did update the name of a few pages so. You see, all of these are either under the reporting tools or the people tools um, heading, and uh, you may not have access to all of these pages. That's really fine. Um, but if you do use any of these pages, I just wanted to make um, this aware to you. Um, as you log in, and you're trying to find a page, and you're like, "Wait, what? Did they change my page name?" Uh, yes, they did. Um, so. Uh, most of them are pretty minor, so it shouldn't be that uh, hard to hard to piece together. Um, for example, this you know query report viewer they just added the you know, BIP in front of it to distinguish. So that is for BI publisher, um, since there are other query reports that you view. So um, rationale behind that was to try and make the pages a little clearer um, for use in. The, the menu search um, to be able to you know, have a better description of what page um, you're actually selecting. So um, 
I'm gonna go through all these, but uh, we see just those are out there if you want to take a look. Um, so we're just kind of as a FYI, since there are um, a few changes to those, and basically what that looks like um, to you know, the rest of the navigation is all the same. Um, just like I mentioned, the, the example basically they just added you know the IP on the front of um, page name, so that will look a little different um, if you're trying to access any of those pages. And then, as far as search functionality goes, like I mentioned at the beginning, um, main thing is they just now made the search bar uh, prominent. It's got a front and center in your face, so um, that'll be at the top of the page um, always for the home page. And then, if you're on any of the other pages other than the home page, I was called the transactional pages. Um, we see the magnifying I. Uh, well, eyeglass uh, will be the only icon showing in the top right space. You don't have the whole um, search bar uh, displaying all the time. But if you do want to uh, use the search feature um, on the transactional pages, basically you would just can select the magnifying glass icon, and then this will basically pop out kind of up to the left, um, and so it kind of looks. Uh, you know, pretty similar to what it looks like on the home page. Uh, so basically, you can uh, type in your search criteria, and then either uh, you can just press the enter key on your keyboard uh, to initiate the search, or you can um, select the little magnifying light, uh, eyeglass, which will uh, basically initiate the search as well. Um, so once you do that, I'm going to show an example here. Uh, searching based on the word query. Uh, it takes you to the search results page. That's the same um, like we have in 857. And then, uh, you know, so if you're wanting to get to the query viewer page, for example, you know, you'd select that and then it would take you there. So um, it's basically just a, you know, alternative route um, instead of using the kind of menu navigation or, um, you know, if you had it as a tile or favorite saved, um, it's just a, another way to. To kind of navigate through the system. So, um, so I want to make folks aware of that. And then um, let's go over a few kind of colorization changes briefly. Uh, since Padma talked about those a little bit more depth. Um, but as, as you are kind of going through menus, um, there's just the coloring is a bit different. Um, kind of as you're selecting items, as shown there, uh, as well as on the menu. Um, so I'm going to shift it from the yellow to this kind of blue gray color. And then the kind of mentioned has the, you know, higher contrast kind of bar on the left to help denote, uh, you know, which option you have selected. And you know, similarly on uh, tiles, the home pages. So instead of just being kind of a yellow colorization, uh, added a you know, darker border with some uh, shadowing as well. And then they also added um, some asterisks to some pages, which will help denote uh, required fields a little bit better, um, since it's not the most obvious uh, eight by seven. So uh, we have another side by side comparison. So uh, like you see here for the quick enroll student page, um, basically all these options are uh, required fields that basically you need to enter values into before you can proceed. Um, because you notice it's you know, not really marked that way or anything get decay that way. Um, so if I've died, just to make it a little clearer, you notice they basically added the asterisk to all these um, field labels there. So that way um, it's a little clearer to users that, hey, I need to you know, make sure I enter values um, into all those fields um, before proceeding. So. Um, so that's another nice change they made. And then um, the process monitor page, so this is the page um, used to kind of schedule jobs, and, uh, you know, manage uh, jobs or job sets that have been running. Um, made a few tweaks to this page as well um, that I've have kind of highlighted in the purple boxes here. So, um, First thing they've added uh, two new buttons, so the clear and reset, which are nice additions. 
um, if you are uh, entering, you know, various search criteria to try to narrow things down as far as, uh, you know, trying to find your exact process or whatever you're looking for. Um, so if you select the clear button, basically it clears out all these fields um, down here and it will just basically leave you with the last um, kind of one day for the timeline um, and then reset. Basically does the same thing, but it uh, it's going to plop your user ID um, in there. And so that's, like I said, basically it's nice instead of having to like, clear out each of these fields you know, one by one that you'd enter uh, additional criteria in. Basically, you could just, you know, we could use either button and then that will knock those out. And then you can click refresh and then be able to um, search, uh, you know, accordingly. And then the other change they've made, they added uh, this new uh, column or the right is called actions. Uh, so we see, you know, when you find our process you're looking for, you select the actions drop down, and then you get this little drop down menu um, to select some various things. And basically, all these options here uh, are the same options that uh, you know we still could get to in use in A57, and you still can in A59. I'm just by selecting this details option here. So basically, you can select this details link, you get the details page, and then you know you'd be able to access the message log or whatever you're looking for that way. Um, this is basically just uh, another way to do the same thing. So you can select the action and then you know select like a message log from there to view it. So anyways, just want to make sure you're aware of those. Since those are um, kind of slight updates to the process monitor page. And then um, the last thing I have for you today is basically going over um, a known bug or issue um, that Oracle delivered with 859. Um, and that is on this uh, view all notifications page. So basically if you select um, you know, any of these options, like a particular message, and you want to change the message status from like unread to read, for example, uh, an 857 basically you would just navigate away from that page and then it would save, uh, you know, automatically come back and I will notice you know, that message is you know, still showing in a red state. And with uh, 859, they've basically added this erroneous little pop-up message that asks if you want to save your changes. And uh, so basically, if you come across this, just uh, select yes or no, it doesn't matter. Um, and then you can navigate away from the page and then your changes should be saved um, when you come back. But uh, if you do notice, uh, you click one of these options um, to go back to the page, there is no, uh, save button on the page, so it's kind of a confusing uh, message to receive, but there is no save button available. So, um, moral of the story basically just ignore uh, this message, except either it's like yes or no, um, and then that will get you um, past that. And you can basically navigate from the view all notifications page. Uh, any status changes you did make um, should all be saved. Um, so, yeah, no worries there. So, anyways, that's uh, basically what we had as far as uh, reviewing the documentation. And at this point, we can open it up for questions. Thank you, Padma and Brian. So, if anyone has questions, please raise your hand and we'll go through. Or I do see a question we can get started with for Monica. Uh, she said, I hope when screenwriters land on those form fields, the fact that it is required is announced to the user. I don't see instructions above or below those fields in the screenshot that they are required as noted by an, by an asterisk. So Padma, would that be, would that be something? Yeah. The screen readers uh, announce the required fields. So for that specific thing that uh, Brian displayed, I will have to see the actual navigation to make sure it's doing that. But generally, it always uh, announces. Whenever there is asterisk, it announces it's a required field. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions?
All right. I think then we're going to we're going to be ready to wrap up here. Um, thank you, everyone. I'm going to stop our recording and I'll send this out once it saves to the people that asked for the copy. So I think we're all set and we'll let you go back to your day. Everybody have a great Friday and talk to you later. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.